day two. Instead of jumping right into poker today, I think I'm going to meet Tom. We're going to head down to the San Antonio River Walk. I don't know. We'll see. You'll see when I see. What's going on, man? You can never have too much B-roll. <laughs> no, no, it's actually good. Look at that. Turned on the vlog today. You see the Alamo. The Alamo. So the plan for today is to hold a meetup game at the Rounders at 2 p.m.? Yeah. 2 p.m. It's a little afternoon and we're already drinking. Gonna get live. Then, after the meetup game, we're playing on stream tonight at around 7.30. Sure. <laughs> or around then. It's gonna be a long day today. Okay, San Antonio. I see you with the river walk. This is nice. I'm uh, I'm kind of digging this. I have a feeling I will be back to check uh, more of this river walk out. But if you live in the San Antonio area, I'm sure you're familiar with the river walk ar already. If you don't live in the San Antonio area, come check this out. Give uh, Mr. San Antonio or whoever built this river walk my uh, regards. Very nice. Got anything to say? It's about right. <laughs> Day two at Rounders, and today is the, uh, I think today is the official meetup game day. Me and Landon will make the rounds table to table, and um, try not to get hurt too badly. That's the plan. And then later tonight, we will jump on the live stream, and um, again, try not to get hurt too badly. Solid plan for today. We've got some special guests today. Right there you go. Jim and Bertrand will join Deadlock and Lighting Tyson. We're off the wire here. They're going to be bouncing around the table table. At the time, day two at Rounders was the day I forecasted would be the longest day. A meetup game and a 5 5 live stream was on the agenda. I was wrong, but we'll get to that in another vlog. So, after a long, long day of tournament poker, Meetup games are typically hectic. A really good time, but still hectic. Basically, the premise is that we play poker for a given amount of time, but split that time between all the tables in the room. So in other words, you play for 30 minutes at table one, 30 minutes at table two, 30 minutes at table three, etc. Obviously, this doesn't lead to a play with any basis on a villain's past behavior because you don't have that information. So what typically happens is those blocks of time become mini Q&A sessions with some poker sprinkled in, if you happen to pick up a hand. This is the first time I've ever been to San Antonio. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've just uh, spent this morning doing like all the touristy shit, river walk and seeing the Alamo and saying it's smaller than I think it is. You know, like, it's just all the, all the touristy stuff. <laughs> in today's meetup games, we talked about what living in Vegas is like, what I thought of Texas poker, 
is prostitution in Vegas cheap? And playing with Mike Possle. Actually, there were a lot of questions about Mike Possle. No. And like people are always like, well, didn't you see him looking at his phone? I'm like, yeah, but we were, it's on stream. Everyone's looking at their phone because they're watching the stream. Like, you know, they're watching it on delay. So I was like, no. As far as actually playing hands of poker, decent ones were few and far between. There was a lot of opening with marginal hands like Jack Nine suited or King Queen off and then getting three bet and just folding. All that being said, here you find us three betting a middle position open of $15 to $65 holding ace queen offsuit. Action folds around to the original opener and he finds the call. Can't get many safer flops than this one. Queen of clubs, deuce of hearts, five of spades in the original opener checks. There's zero reason for me to check behind here holding the proverbial nuts and without many potential draws on board, there's little reason to bet large. We bet $40 into about $130 and our opponent quickly calls, leaving himself with about $180. The turn 10 of hearts is of little concern and when the original razor checks again, we decide to bet enough to cover him. We grab a stack of green $25 chips and drop them in the middle. He tanks a bit on this action, but eventually finds the call. But uh, you're, not, you're, not the, you're not out of the woods, bud. <laughs> you're never out of the woods. Oh, wow. I got sucked out. The river king of diamonds appears. I expose my hand, as does he, and he wins this one with King Jack offsuit. Literally the next hand, there's a dealer change, which also means there's a $5 double board bomb pot. If you've watched the vlog for a while, you know that I don't win these things. By my rough calculations lifetime, I'm zero out of 211 bomb pots, which is far worse than a fish. It's like, I'm, I don't know, what's worse than a fish? What's something you feed a fish? I'm like a bomb pot fish flake. You just spread my money into the bomb pot, and all the other animals eat it. That's pretty accurate. Anyway, we look down at pocket sevens, which I guess are good for a nine-handed bomb pot, but who knows. What I do know is that I flop middle set on the top board of eight of hearts, seven of hearts, three of clubs. Not much going on with the bottom board of queen of diamonds, four of clubs, four of spades, though. The same player that won the previous pot with king jack offsuit. No, I'm not salty at all leads for $15 from early position, the player next to act calls, and I'm the last caller from middle position with my lowly set. The turn jack of clubs on the bottom board doesn't do much for me, but the seven of diamonds on the top? Yeah, I like that one. Early position bets again, albeit rather small, $25, and again he is called by the player next to act. With quads, I think a raise is in order, and I make it $115. The early position opener takes no time with it before shoving in for about five hundred dollars. No, all the dough. And the player next to act, tank folds. Obviously, I call. I hope you think you have the top board. <laughs> Otherwise, we're chopping. The river brings the deuce of diamonds on the top and the nine of clubs on the bottom, and he exposes pocket queens. For a flopped full house on the bottom, and we chop. Crazy full of fours. Same table, not too long later, there's an early position open to 20, and I make it $75 in middle position with two kings. Action folds around to the original opener, and he asks, Is the camera on? I assure him that it is. Camera on? It is. <laughs> <laughs> is. And he calls. Everyone knows what happens when you get it heads up and you've raised with kings. Everyone knows. Flop. Ace, three, five, rainbow. Standard. He checks, and with top under pair, I check it back. The turn eight of clubs doesn't change much, and he checks again. 
I seriously doubt I'm going to get two streets of value with this hand with an ace on board. So I check it back. Again. The river brings the three of clubs, which pairs the board and brings in a backdoor flush draw, which I'm not concerned with at all, especially holding the king of clubs. After two checks, the original opener now leads for $125, and I quickly call. He mucks his hand, but I respect the bluff. <laughs> as far as playable hands go, there weren't many to be found, and soon after I moved to another table. The card drought continued here, although there were a ton of good conversation and laughs. In addition to the card drought, I set up my camera like I'd never vlogged a session before making it hard to even see my whole cards. Itching to play a hand, I raised to $15 on the button over two limps with 9-6 suited. The big blind calls, and both limpers call, and we see a flop four ways. Oops. Action checks to me on the ace of clubs, three of clubs, six of clubs monotone board, and I see bet $30 into the $60 pot, and take this one down. Not much else happened at this table, and soon, we were moving again. Meanwhile, on table three. The next table was very similar to the previous two. Lots of laughs, but not many hands to speak of. Here I raised to $15 in late position over four limps with pocket nines and end up seeing the flop three ways. No real complaints about the ace of diamonds, nine of hearts, five of diamonds flop. And when action checks to me, I bet $35. But get no further action. 35. This is not your water, is it, sir? No. Okay. Oh, now you fold. <laughs> I can't do sorry. <laughs> After another handful of orbits, we move again. It's four o'clock on a Thursday, and I think that uh, it's mid session update time here at Rounders Card Club. Um, so far, I've played one, two, three different one, two tables. I was in the game for 800, and I think I had about 800 when I got to my current table, which is a one, two, five game, and I added on another grand. So we are currently into the games collectively for $1,800, and the games in Texas are as advertised. They are wild. There's a lot of limping. There's a lot of re-raising. There's a lot of action. So... We have maybe two, two and a half hours before the stream starts. We're probably going to sit in this one, two, five game for the majority of that time, try to make things happen, then get on the stream and try to make things happen there. So, quick mid session update. Let's get back in there. I did not get a uh, status update from Tom and or Landon before stepping out to do that update. So as soon as I find out how they are doing, man, it's dark here. As soon as I find out how they are doing, I'll let you know. Until then, wish me luck. Although the one-two games here are big, the one-two-five game is noticeably bigger. 
so I added on another $1,000 when I joined this table. I got into the game kinda late, so I didn't play many hands at all. Oh, and I lost a bomb pot. Shocker. In this game, they play the $15 PLO double board variety. As I said, I didn't stay here very long as it was soon time to get ready to play on the live stream. So with the regular cash portion of the evening over, we are getting ready to start the 5-5 five, five, No Limit Rounders live stream, which I'm sure will end up playing much, much larger than 5-5. Five, five. I think I'm gonna buy in for somewhere between three and four grand. Wish me luck. I'm at a table full of killers. Table full of killers, Tom. You're the killer, baby. Come on. <laughs> so, clock, wish baby. me luck. And you will probably end up knowing how this whole thing turned out well before you see this vlog of me showing you how the whole damn thing turned out. Amen. I really like that shirt. I feel that there's a message. So it's live stream time. There are always pre-game jitters before live streams. You're normally playing without home court advantage versus players that know each other really well in a game that plays well above its noted stake. In Texas, the latter is on steroids. The game is listed as 5-5, but that is really more of a suggestion than anything else. I debate on buying in for 3 or 4k or just going YOLO and buying in for like 10k. I settle on 3k to let me get a feel of the game a bit, and if I need to add on, so be it. As it turns out, the game we actually played was more 5-5-10 or 5-5-10-25 with the occasional 5-5-10-25-50-100. As you can imagine, it got kind of nutty. And uh, you'll probably start seeing a bit more action. More action. Oh, look at this. We got <laughs> straddles, right? We got 10, 20, 50, 100. Jaden, bring it out, the, the $100 straddle. Let's go. My reward for putting on the $100 straddle? King 3 offsuit. Of course. Unfortunately for me, the card deadness that I experienced in the 1-2-5 game carried over to this one. I had very few opportunities to really get in there and mix it up. Here I find an open with ace-jack offsuit, which gets flatted by Kinnon on my left. Big Daddy Chaz puts in a 3-bet to $250 and gets cold called from the button. It's strange, but there isn't much I can do about it. My hand just isn't strong enough to continue. It's a typical 5-5 meetup. It is in Texas. Yeah. I mean, if you're not prepared for a 5-5 game in Texas, you shouldn't be here, right, Jamie? I mean, come on. Everybody knows that you go to a 5-5 game and buy in for 10000 in Texas. What the hell? <laughs> because you never know when a hand is going to break out. Playing 5-5-10 at this point, DQ has limped in the effective under-the-gun position, and I raise it to $60 with ace-queen offsuit. Action folds around to the big blind, who's also one of the more action-y players at the table. Yaya and he tanks. In my mind, I'm thinking, here we go. This kid looks like he's up to no good. A little 6x oh, bump. Oh, that's coming in. Yaya's playing. I see Yaya playing that 8-6 the He's hearts. out of the way for sure. <laughs> he's can't make he's a only calling if he doesn't raise this. If he doesn't raise. Oh, he's, call, he's raising. <laughs> he re-raises to $250 and DQ finds the call. Believe it or not, this isn't a slam dunk call with my hand. More often than not, it's a fold. However, this is a stream, ranges are all over the place, and I'm looking to play. I call. Being card dead is fine, as long as you aren't flop dead. And for the majority of the day, I've been flopping really well. That continues here as we see a flop of Queen of Hearts, Deuce of Diamonds, Seven of Hearts. 
Yaya C-bets for $200, DQ finds the call, and I don't really have any option here besides calling. DQ's range should be made up of mostly pocket pairs, not deuces, but sevens are in there for sure, and Yaya potentially could have anything. That includes aces and kings. The turn three of clubs is an interesting one. Completely disconnected from the board, I expect big bets and even over bets to be launched my way here. Yaya bets $850, which is a bit smaller than expected. DQ folds, and now for me, it's decision time. I can pretty easily just shove here with the SPR being around one, and if he has the over pair, oh well. However, if he is on a draw, he might just fold. Or I can call here, still lose to the over pair on a blank river, because I'm not folding. But also maybe get value from bluffs if he chooses to go bet, bet, bet. Or maybe I'm just coloring him with king queen and I win either way. I choose the more gambly of the options and just call. The river queen of clubs locks this hand up. I just leaped his over pairs, which is good, but the board pairing in this fashion is going to make it hard for him to bluff, as my hand should look almost exactly like what it is. Something with a queen. Sensing this, Yaya gives up and I make an easy shove for 1.5k, knowing that I'm really never getting called. And he folds. Look at this hand. Yuchon has a really strong hand. But look at E's hand. Keep in mind, the game was action packed. Not everyone was card dead. Like here, Kings vs. Ace King ran across two boards in which Ace King scoops for a $10,000 pot. Oh. oh, wow. Are you kidding me? Any 10? 10, 10 ball. Red card. Red card. Red card. Yeah, oh, oh the flush gets God. there. Oh, they're running it twice. So we many have $6,000. So what do you expect? Outs. Oh, a dead ace. Oh, my gosh. An ace comes out. Ace. Oh, an ace. A 10, a jack. I was card dead. Like, card dead, dead, dead. It starts messing with your mind. Also, keep in mind that I wasn't brought to rounders to fold for three straight hours on stream. That's not fun. So I decided to just pick some hands and play them. Why I picked queen three suited from the hijack, who knows. But that's what I did. In this hand, we are playing 5-5-100. Five, five, yes, 5-5-100. Five, five, Rhonda decides to limp with pocket tens and enough is enough. I put in a race to $350 with queen three suited from the hijack. Because I'm nuts. This, this is the hand I decided to use. Anyway, Yaya calls the additional $250 from the under the gun spot and Rhonda with way, way the best hand comes along too. He called Yaya. Is that right? Where Jamin raised with the queen three of clubs from the hijack? I flopped Jin on three nine five with two spades and bet seven hundred dollars into the eleven hundred dollar pot when it's checked over to me. Kudos to the commentary booth for describing perfectly what was going on in my mind. No, he, he's going to bet seven hundred to make sure no one raises him, to make sure he can catch a queen or a three on the turn. I, I just think it's very hard to put <coughs> anybody on over pair to the board because I think Rhonda comes in with a raise here. Also. His hand is not going to improve. Like, this is probably as good as his hand is going to be. Right. You know, the next card that comes has to be a three. He may not like it. Has to be a three or three. So maybe what? I was willing. I was willing to die on this hill. Like I said, the game was action packed. Have you ever seen Ace King versus Kings versus Aces for almost a fifteen thousand dollar pot? I have. Aces versus Kings versus Ace King. As if this game needed any more excitement. Well, let's just slow it down a little bit. No one's going to call. You know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why it already it say, happened. Why does it say pot 15.3K? So Yaya 3 bets 1.1, and then Rock and Ronda jammed over top for her, her entire stack. And Kenan's, he's folding. Kenan threw up in his mouth with Ace King suited. 100% he's folding. Are you kidding me? He's not nitty. I'm nitty. No, he's he's the opposite of Nitty. But the thing is, look, he's gonna look. But she shoves so quickly, though. I mean, I didn't even see it happen. Uh oh, 
Yeah, oh, he shipped it. Yeah, he he's like, he's like, uh, if you got it, you there's got only, it. Yeah, there's and, only and one Are oh, they running it twice? Oh, and Kenan's loving his fold. He needs diamonds. If he sees diamonds run out, he'll be sick. Oh, it's a safe card. They're running it twice. Clean. What? One time. Oh, my gosh. One time for all time. Ronda's a professional stacker. Before the night was over, card dead or not, I wanted to get into a pot with Landon. In this hand, action is folded to me in the hijack, and I make a standard open to $50 with king six of diamonds. Landon, on the button, three bets me to $200. The gall on this kid. I have to call, right? I mean, who doesn't want to play a pot out of position against a long-haired poker prodigy that has probably played more hands this week than I have in my entire life? I call. I completely miss everything on the flop and check full to his C-bet. I did, however, try to blow his cards over because he wouldn't tell me what he had. I was unsuccessful. Normally I go outside for this kind of thing, but it is um, mid-session update time and it is cold. So we're just going to do it right here at the table. Okay. We're going to do it live. <sighs> My session thus far. I've kind of lucked out because I got this wild guy on my right, that guy in the hat with all the chips. And for the most part, I've been pretty much card dead. Picked up queens one time, picked up pocket sixes that you've seen, <sighs> made a play, tried to make a move against, uh, made a bad call against Landon with king six of diamonds, put in a three bet with jack ten, and uh, oh, won a big pot with ace queen. Other than that, it's just been a lot of folding. A lot of me staying in place against a bunch of killers in San Antonio. But I think we have probably another 90 minutes left in the stream. Of that 90 minutes, I think I'm gonna jump into the booth for a little bit. So the plan is to keep playing well and to finish strong. And that is your mid-session update. Yes, sir. I just wanted to hear that live. Also, so hard to actually pull the trigger on that when Big Daddy is not Man. representing nines. Um, it's not a big bet, though. All in? So there it is. Oh, yeah. that's, that's a pretty big bet. That's what we're talking <laughs> about. Like, he's got he got it. I thought it was but just... He announced all in. <laughs> he's got that's a big it. bet. Yeah. Look at it. Chaz is laughing. <laughs> well, What's up, Jamin? What's up, Jamin? Nothing, just uh, hanging out a little bit. I'm gonna jump in here and see what you guys are doing. How's the night going? As the night wore on, the card deadness subsided, and I did play a few more hands. Nothing of any merit, though. Before leaving, however, I hopped in the commentary booth for a bit. Not my favorite card. Yeah, game. No. Scary card yeah. <laughs> yeah right. not of all the cards. Yeah, of hit, all the cards. That might be your least favorite, favorite yeah. card, right? And again, and, and not my favorite river. But what can these guys really do? It's gonna be checked down, probably, right? No one's going to try and steal it. There's a check. DQ could try to steal it. He has a worse you know, equity Honest, showdown. Yeah. Honestly, go. I had like, <laughs> I'd locked in here and I actually told myself if DQ tries to steal this, I'm not going in. Right. Like, I'm just yeah. going to take my punishment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, He's that guy. E, you know? I think, might have been able to steal it, but like DQ, I was like, all right, I'm just taking my punishment. Yeah. DQ could definitely yeah. rep it by betting three quarter pot. Yeah. Live stream over, and we're gonna call it a night because you know what? We gotta turn around and be right back here tomorrow for a tournament. So let's wrap this uh, thing up midnight here at uh, Rounders Card Club in San Antonio, Texas. In that live stream game for three grand, out for forty-five eighty. So up fifteen hundred and some change. Good guys, good game. I hope you guys watched it. If not, check out the description below. I'll link it uh, so you can check out all the uh, all the craziness of a Texas 5-5 No Limit game. But until then, hey, if you like the vlogs, leave me a comment, subscribe, and uh, click that little thumbs up like icon thing, and I will. Uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye. Third day here at uh, Rounders in San Antonio, and today 
We play a tournament. Tournament Jamin. Maybe that's who I am now. It is now, I don't know, pushing seven o'clock. Tournament started at noon. I would say, let's uh, wrap this thing up so I can get back to the hotel room and go to sleep because the stream is over. But that's not entirely true. The stream is over. I am wrapping the vlog up, but I'm probably going to continue playing for a little bit. Unfortunately, the uh, participants, unfortunately, some of the participants in the stream game have taken off. So I don't know if I'm still going to keep playing 5-5 or maybe I'll go play 1-2-5, but I'm definitely going to hang out for a while, maybe have a couple drinks, and then head back to the hotel room. Um, I can't even give you the results uh, for the night. I know I was, I know I bought into the stream for 3,000, and I think when the stream ended, I was at 5,500. So let's just call it up 2.5, and we will call it a night and move on to the next thing. So if you like the vlogs, um, hit the like, Come on, let's go. subscribe, leave me a comment. I'll probably respond. If there are any other outstanding things that happen tonight, you'll hear about it. Probably not till tomorrow, but you'll hear about it later. Well, at least we know it wasn't quad. <laughs> and I've sort of stayed out of ingesting myself and, I st and I've sort of stayed out of forcefully pushing myself into tricky. I can't be... We have about uh, another hour on this stream. I think I'm going to jump into the commentary booth for a bit. And uh, let's finish strong. You know? I still have two more nights of Rounders Texas card room. Four o'clock on a Thursday mid-session update. I apologize for the wind. I can't control it. Was in the game for 800 and I think I was in the game. We're going to hit you guys with the double mid-session update tonight. Um, I did sit in that 125 game for about an hour and a half. I think in that hour and a half I played one hand with Ace Jack offsuit and I lost to, I don't know, 5-7 offsuit or something. There was really nothing going on for me in that game. It was kind of card dead. But now we are getting prepped for the Rounders live stream. Um, we are playing 5-5 five, five, No Limit, which will probably play gigantic. I am um, buying into the game for, I don't know, somewhere between three and four grand. I haven't decided yet, but I'm sure you will see this on stream before you even see the vlog. So, wish me